Hi, today we're looking at photographing little owls and this is another of those rent to hide opportunities that I've been doing since the lockdown and this is the same place that I photographed the Kingfisher so it's Droitwich in Worcestershire I'll put the website address in the description the little owl doesn't run all the year round because they're most active when they're feeding young on the nest which they appear to be at the moment the rest of the year they're going to be probably only active early morning late evening so you need to check with the farmer Sharon as to whether the hide is running or not whereas the kingfisher just runs all the year round the problem I've got today though it's a wet day and when little owls get wet they look very very scruffy they don't look handsome at all so I'm going to struggle with that I think because it's going to be showers all day but I have to see I like the fence posts they've put up to the left that's very photogenic and there's little containers behind there that you can put your mealworms and your dead mice in and Sharon supplies those but the other post, the other the vertical one that's not quite so attractive and it's got some nails in it and some plastic ties so I can't really pull those out I could cover them in mud but better still I've gone and fetched another log and put that on top of it so we won't actually see the ugly post in the, in the picture they're also landing on the proper fence to the right hand side of the hide and the big tree is where they're nesting so the main problem I've got is the weather it's another hide where you need a bean bag you can't really get a tripod in because there's this big wide shelf here and I'm using the Sony A1 with the 200 to 600 at the moment I'm getting used to it it's got lots of advantages about 60 meters behind the hide there's a very large pile of photogenic logs and during the course of the day I swap them over several times just make sure it's in a nice position it's not too high against the, the skyline but the stump I don't find very photogenic but it does act as a nice table to be able to arrange your props on so here's the owl sitting on the fence and at its nest hole very dark under there on such a rainy day it's a very well built hide and very waterproof and low down you can see there is a panel if you want to shoot at ground level you can I didn't try to do that it was very wet on the grass I don't really want the bird on the grass but the hide is spacious you can get four photographers in there The scrimming you're shooting through is the clear view scrimming and it works very well. You have a very clear view from the inside looking out but the bird can't see you at all. Now I didn't try to count the amount of times the little owl came in but it'd be measured in the hundreds. It was back and forth all day long. Sometimes it would have a break, it might be away for 10-15 minutes, but all too often it's sitting in front of you, waiting to be photographed. You can see the feathers are a bit soggy. It was not ideal conditions to photograph in. You can change that log as often as you want. There's no problem getting out of the hide. The bird will just disappear for a short period and come back. Now it's feeding now on the mealworms, so it does go behind the post. But there's plenty of times when it's sitting on top of the post and out in the open. Very showy bird. And what you really don't want is pictures of the bird with mealworms in its bill. I'm slowing down on feeding the mice because there's only about a dozen mice and I'm just hoping the weather does improve and the little owl dries out a bit. We'll carry on with the mealworms, I've got plenty of those. And I've got quite a few earthworms too, which I brought with me, but again Sharon does supply them.
and this is my first 4K slow motion footage, 120 frames per second and the quality difference over my Micro Four Third system, be it Olympus or Panasonic, is huge. And the fact that it will auto focus, that's what really pleases me. It's also much easier to set the slow motion as well. There's a separate setting for it on the main dial on top of the camera, S and Q, so I can get into slow motion much quicker. And as I will have said in many of my YouTube videos, I really enjoy looking at wildlife in slow motion. the left hand side we have the GoPro Hero 9 and you might think that owl is staring at it but it's not it's not bothered by it at all it's just that that's what little owls do they stare at things so now he's staring at something else but he wasn't bothered by the camera at all so this is the footage from the GoPro you can see the tin on the back of the fence where the mealworms are and that tree to the right hand side, that's the nest tree. And all I've done with the GoPro is just left it running. It will run for over two hours before the battery goes flat and I wasn't likely to have to wait more than a few minutes for the little owl to come in. I sometimes wish the GoPro Hero 9 would focus a little bit closer. Several times I've had things come right up to the lens and they will then be out of focus. just talk briefly about the Sony A1. The autofocus, very impressive. We've entered a new generation of autofocus. I'm sure the Canon R5 and R6 are just as good, but it is a huge leap forward in the speed and accuracy of the autofocus. The video, it's great to be able to shoot 4K slow motion and it autofocuses. That's the main reason I brought the camera and it works. It's wonderful. The other thing I like about the Sony A1 is the clarity of the viewfinder. It's the first electronic viewfinder I've looked through that I feel is as clear as an optical viewfinder. Now it's been a long time since I looked through an optical viewfinder, but I, th I think it is. It's as clear. And it makes a big difference to be able to see exactly what's going on and where a bird's head is precisely. It rained pretty well non-stop all day and at the nest itself it was very dark and miserable and sometimes I had trouble seeing whether the little owl was outside of its nest. Nevertheless, when it launched into flight, the Sony A1 was able to autofocus on it and keep it sharp so long as I could keep the bird in the frame. And the fact there's no blackout between the frames makes it so much easier to be able to follow even a fast flying bird like a little owl. I've yet to do flight pictures in the ideal conditions. A largest bird in good light. I just haven't had the opportunity yet, but it copes with the very difficult subjects like this very, very well. And a few flight shots between the various perches.
and then I'll finish off with just a handful of stills pictures that I took on the day. Thanks for watching.